So with that said, um, maybe to go a bit more into... Yeah, because yeah, this is actually the first time I'm doing uh, a video. This is my first video in this new uh, Baku Log series, so, so I haven't actually explained to you guys uh, what this series is about just yet. So uh, yeah, maybe to go into more into that. Um, this is... Not exact. I, I don't even know what to exactly to compare this to. It's not exactly a first impressions video, but not exactly like a full blind let's play. Basically, the so th this is uh, similar to the uh, an idea that I've done. I've done this a couple times before on the channel, where I just pick up a game and just decide I'm gonna play this through until I lose interest in it. Basically, I've done it before with like La Mulana. If you guys, any of you guys, have followed my videos on that series, you'll remember I said at the beginning like disclaimer. I don't know if this game, if I'm going to like this game at all, or if it's going to hold my interest to the end, so it's like, you know, I don't promise that I'm going to finish this, I'm going to play this until I either, you know, get bored of it, or decide that uh, it's not worth doing any more videos on it, or whatever, but, and that's kind of the same promise I'm going to be making here, it's like, or rather the same no promise, <laughs> the same prom promise I'm not going to be making. Uh, this is not going to be a full playthrough, but it's going to be a bit more than like a quick little first impressions type deal. Okay, so, man, this this jetpack thing seems to be, like, completely unlimited. Like, is it draining my yellow bar there? It is not. So I've just got, like, unlimited jetpack here. That's kind of cool. It's like, yeah, that, and you, you saw, like, before, I was, like, completely forgot that I even had a jump button. That's kind of awesome. Almost make me, makes me wonder if they could have gotten away with, like, no jump button. Made it, like, a, you know, a bionic commando type thing where you just can't jump. Although, you know, you'd have a jetpack instead of a grapple arm, which kind of makes it not like Bionic Commando at all. I, I, I just, I guess, feel the need to reference games that involve grappling in, like, every... Oh, I just got a new item in my inventory. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Man, these, these guys... Also, yeah, yeah, a lot of kind of elementary mistakes, though, I'm seeing from these guys. I, I think a lot of, like, the basics, like, the, the fundamentals in this game are pretty strong. I've, I've seen, like, some pretty neat old-school PC-style level design so far. We've got, like, some good, you know, good, well-developed controls and a lot of different cool weapons. A lot of decent enemy variety so far, too. A lot of the fundamentals are here. They've got, like, the basic building blocks for a great game, I think, so far. It's just uh, a, a lot of the simple little UI things, like the water, like a lot of the instant death stuff doesn't stand out as much as it should. Uh, and yeah, you got shit like where the yeah the birds shit on you through like foreground elements that block your sh that block your vision of their and yeah with the water again. <laughs> and also what I was getting to yeah that that enemy that reflects projectiles it's like just to look at that enemy the first time you see him you would ne there's nothing about that little eye that little gray eyeball enemy suggests to me that oh this is a projectile reflection enemy it's like come on if it's if you've got like a projectile reflection enemy like give him give him something that actually indicates to the player that this enemy is going to reflect projectiles. Like, give him a little a little shield, or like a little glowing barrier, or something like that. Uh, just to, you know, give feedback to the player. It's like, and yeah, I'm seeing a lot of those kinds of little niggling, uh, what do they call it? Like, usability type, type stuff. Which is, uh, honestly, one, one thing I've noticed that, like, a lot of these or my, my, I tend not to care so much because like a lot of these little retro indie games tend to miss out on the fundamentals to begin with. But another thing that they tend to botch a lot, I find, is uh, like just, again, yeah, those little kind of simple uh, usability uh, type things that I've been mentioning. But, but I tend not to care so much in those cases because, you know, the fundamentals aren't exactly there, so... The, like, at that point, the games have serious prob more serious problems than just, like, little usability-type things and, you know, cheap hits and elements not having as good of... Uh, not sort of presenting as much affordance as they should to the user and that kind of stuff. Did I use that word correctly? It's been ages since I took my design class back in university. But, you know, uh, where, like, the, the visual appearance of an object will suggest to you what it actually does without the need for, like you know, some without the need for, like, text or anything to explain what it does. Something, for example, like an enemy with a shield reflecting projectiles and that kind of stuff. And yeah, a lot of that, a lot of that kind of stuff is kind of lacking here from what I've seen so far. Oh man, there was 
I kind of want to open that... Oh, wait, and I can open that blue keycard door because I have the blue keycard, but I screwed up. Okay. Man, I really don't think I want to go for 100% in this game, but then again, I feel kind of compelled to. That's... Actually, that, that's the mark. So, typically, I kind of hate collect-a-thon games where they... It's, it's really weird. It's like it... In games that involve, like, collect thon type stuff, like, you know, your Donkey Kong games and stuff like that, I tend to hate those kinds of games and just hate, like, collect thon type stuff in general, where, you know, there's, like, a... There's, like, 300 doodads in the level, and you've got to collect them all in order to get 100%. And I tend to hate that kind of thing in video games, but I don't know, in certain games, especially games where that kind of... where it's like you can do that, but it's not required, I, I tend to enjoy it more. Like, uh, if you if you guys have seen my Animaniacs playthrough, I just felt compelled to get every single star that I could find, even if it was, like, just a little bit out of the way, just because... I don't know, collecting stars is fun, I think, when it's, you know, when it's not forced on you, when I don't have to go backtracking through the whole level in order to find all the stars, in order to get to the next level. Oh, I see, I see what's going on here. Um, okay, so the, the jetpack is an optional element of certain levels, so it takes a, it takes away my jetpack uh, on certain levels, and I guess I've got to find it. Okay, so yeah, this is definitely kind of stage-based... Uh, level design for for sure. I would yeah, I would not call this a Metroidvania whatsoever. Thought it, I thought it would be with the jetpack there, but yeah, that's just like a another just, you know, stage element, uh, a thing that you can collect in certain levels. That that's kind of neat. So you got kind of two different uh two different types of gameplay here where you've got like your, you know, your basic 2D platforming stuff where you're just jumping through the level and you know, it's kind of, you know, physics-based movement. As if, you know, all movement didn't involve physics, but yeah, you know what I mean. Like, uh, like, uh, gravity-based, and gravity-based ba gravity movement, and momentum control, and that kind of stuff. As opposed, as opposed to more freeform, yeah, like freeform flying movement. So you've got, like, those kind of, those, oh my goodness, I've, <laughs> I keep screwing up on these freaking grenades. <laughs> okay. But yeah, a lot of cool stuff so far in this game. I think this, this one might actually be a keeper, which would be, uh, really cool. So yeah, I guess to let you guys in on like a little bit of behind the scenes stuff, this is not this is not the first video that I've recorded for this series. I will say not not the first video I've attempted to record for this series. Um, I've tried out a few games actually. Like I said, I've got a I've got a lot to choose from. I've got like liter between GOG and Steam, I've got like literally pro probably close to like 500 games. That's maybe a bit high. Maybe closer to like 300. 300, 400-ish games in my backlog. Just games that I own on the PC and have not played yet. And, uh, I... So, yeah, I've, I've, I've played many of them, and a lot of them are, like, cheap little indie games like this that I've gotten in, like, you know, your hum your Humble Bundles or your, like, 90% off sales where I can get them for a dollar or two. Those kinds of things. So, yeah, just, you know, simple little games that I can, can just kind of fire up, try them out for a little while, and then... What's end up ended up happening is a lot of the time, a lot of these games I've tried out so far have been just kind of, kind of bleh. Just like not not terrible or anything, but just kind of not very interesting. The, the kinds of games like I was describing, for example, I played, uh, oh, this was embarrassing. I almost don't want to admit this, but I picked up, um, oh, what was it? I think it was called Akane the Kunoichi, which is like this, uh, actually another kind of, uh, you know, PC... Uh, Reminiscent of those, you know, kind of old Apogee, Epic Games type, uh, you know, PC, 2D platformers on PC, basically. Re very reminiscent of that, those kinds of games in that game, uh, Akane no Kunoichi as well. Actually, Hocus Pocus was the one game that that reminded me of a lot, except with, like, extremely dumbed-down level design and not as many power-ups and, uh, Awful, awful bosses. Mind you, Hocus Pocus had pretty shitty bosses to begin with, but Akane the Kush Kunoichis were worse. And like the, oh god, the only reason I even bought that freaking game was because, okay, one, it was really cheap at the time. It was on sale for like a bunch of, I, I think I got it for like no more than two or three dollars. And also it, 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 it had like an anime ninja chick with big tits on the sort of Steam store page banner, so... Good job, Akane the Kunoichi, dude. You freaking suckered me in with your goddamn foxy anime ladies, and I bought your shitty game. 
And like I said, it wasn't a dreadfully shitty game, actually, by any means. It was just kind of kind of extremely mediocre, very lackluster, and does not that that game did not compare compare well to you know those the those kinds of games I listed. The old the old PC games in this style. Uh, the perfect example of the kind of game I was talking about that kind of apes the old like it's a kind of kind of a ripoff or reimagining or homage or whatever you want to call it to a certain style of old game but then fails to improve on that style it just kind of rehashes what's come before only just kind of simplifies and dumbs it down and yeah that's a perfect example of the kind of game i was talking about that just does not doesn't do it for me just yeah and th those, I can't even remember the other one that I played, but yeah, um, a lot of the games that I've been trying have just been totally lackluster, and it's like, I guess I could do, like, a video on something like that, where it's like, you know, arguably, you know, it could be like a consumer type, you know, just, just for your guys' sake, I guess, so I can just kind of show off, okay, let's try out this game and see how it is. Turns out it's not very good, but then... I don't really have... that doesn't really make for a... like, it makes for, I guess, like, potential... Oh my goodness, I gotta pay attention to what I'm actually doing here. But, uh, like, it makes for, like, maybe a useful video from a consumer perspective, but it's not a very... Oh, I see what's going on here. Wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> but it's not... it's not a very entertaining video. It's basically just me, like, going, like, okay, that kinda sucks, this is kinda boring, this isn't as good as a bunch of other games I've played that are like this. And it's just basically that for like an hour. And it's like, technically that could be useful to like people who are looking into whether they or not they want to buy those specific games, but it doesn't make for like a very entertaining video. So it's like I ended up scrapping those videos because it was just like an hour, like a, literally an hour long wine fest where it's just like, okay, that kind of sucks, this kind of sucks, this game is kind of boring, the level design kind of sucks. Whereas th this game, in contrast, so let's let's get back to the good stuff, this game. <laughs> and yeah, I'm seeing like a bunch of new obstacles too, and it's kind of changing. It's interesting, it's not really changing things up too drastically in terms of the graphics. It's like, I can kind of tell, like, it feels like I'm still kind of in the same area, but they're like, I'm seeing, they're just kind of like gradually adding like new graphical elements, like, you know, the city, it kind of like adding a city into the background. We got these flashing lights. It's like kind of adding new visual elements and adding new gameplay elements all the time. I'm wondering, how long they can keep this up like that, that's the other thing uh, that will be interesting to see because like I said another problem I have uh, with a lot of these little indie uh, platformers or the yeah these indie 2d retro style games is they tend not to be very ambitious like with with as much cool stuff as I'm seeing in this old in this game right now I'm afraid that I'm like like I'm gonna do my video on this and I'm gonna beat this like right now within an hour there's just like it's just like, yeah, so much variety, so much cool stuff, like the awesome fundamental mechanics. Uh, and yeah, the graphics are pretty good. I'm actually kind of warming up to the style. Again, now that I kind of know what games to more act that are more accurate comparisons to this one, it's like, oh, wow, I'm just really impressed, which makes me think like, oh, my goodness, how long can, can they keep this up? Because that's the other thing I've seen noticed with a lot of indie games. It's like they tend to be like really short. That tend, goes to like what I was saying about the lack of lack of ambition. And yeah, a lot of the ones that are really good tend to be like really short as well. It's like I almost feel like this game is too good. It's like if this was made by a tiny team, it's like there's no way they can keep this up for like the length of a full game. This game's gonna like for for the quality that this is made by a small indie team. I'm thinking like oh my god, this game's gonna end in like an hour. And I'm really afraid. I don't want this to end. Or, or either that or they'll jump the shark and it'll end up being like they'll run out of ideas and there will be nothing left. Oh my goodness, still? So I'm having fun with this. It's like, oh yeah, really? Like yeah, a lot of, like I've played a lot of games that kind of give me that, you know, nostalgia for the 16-bit console games. I, I, I don't really see that many games like hearkening back to the old, you know, the old days of Apogee and Epic and those kinds of old uh, PC shooters. I feel like that bubbling stuff down there is gonna kill me, but... Yeah, that's what I thought. Now it feels like there's like... There's gotta be down there for a reason, right? Like there's gotta be a switch or something, and then I go down there and then there's something there. I can't move the camera. But yeah, I... I actually... So this seems like it might be kind of annoying, this whole like... Yeah, th there was a, in fact, it, it wasn't wasn't just 2D PC games back then. This is like reminiscent of like a lot of different styles of games, like the whole the whole like key card, yeah, key cards and uh, 
like, you know, hitting a bunch of buttons in order to, to unlock the exit. That that kind of level design was like, yeah, and so, sort of uh, was the style back in like 90s PC games, even apart from your uh, your 2D ones. Like, yeah, Doom and Duke Nukem, for example, or like Duke Nukem 3D I'm talking about now, were uh, all about that kind of stuff in their level design, which is, uh, I don't know, in some ways it was kind of an annoying thing and it's like like you're seeing now where I'm completely lost and I kind of have to backtrack through the level and like in that sense it's kind of annoying you could say but on the other hand I there's some there's arguments for and, and against personally I don't mind it terribly as long as the levels are kind of well designed and by that I mean it's like levels that kind of that kind of have to make you think that's the one thing I like about this style of level it's like there, there's not really a lot of thought. No, you don't really have to pay attention too much when you're playing a, kind of a linear arcade-style 2D game. It's just like, a, like you, you have to pay attention to what you're doing in terms of, like, you know, dodging the enemies and making use of the terrain and stuff. But in, ter in terms of, like, a, your, your, like, spatial awareness, your, uh, your sense of direction, that kind of stuff, actually paying attention to the level and trying to think... So, sort of map it out in your mind as you go through. And I, I kind of liked that, actually. I kind of miss it in video games in general. Something almost almost puzzly about it, really. And yeah, it, it's something that I kind of miss from video games. I say that now, that I'm like, you know, kind of... Okay, here we go. If I, so yeah, if I just remembered that there was the green door there. Actually, oh my... God. You know what you know what would make this game really good right now? A map. I would... I would love to see me a map somewhere in this game's... Nope. No map for me. So I, I see that thing up there is like for like switching weapons or something. I have no idea how to do that. I, I guess it just looks like it just, you know, changes your weapons when you collect the thing. I don't know why they feel the need to show all of the weapons up there then, though, if you can only change your weapon by collecting certain power-ups. Um... Yeah, I have no idea why that's the case, but I don't know. Just another kind of, not so much a bad interface thing, but just kind of a weird thing. I guess you could argue it's like kind of bad because they, like they could, you know, like I, I've, I've talked before how there are a lot, a lot of like kind of minimalist interface people out there who think that whenever possible, like a game should not include a HUD. It's just like all HUDs should be banned from every video game ever, whenever possible. And like I've seen, I've seen some people advocate that philosophy personally, I think. It's completely stupid. Like, conveying information to this player is essential, especially in games beyond a certain level of complexity. And, you know, complexity is typically, like, a good thing in games, uh, to a certain extent. Like, if a game is simplistic enough to not require an interface, that's probably, like, an incredibly, like, childishly simple, shitty game, basically. So, yeah, not... But with that said, though, um, unnecessary interface clutter I can get behind as, like, a thing to avoid whenever possible. And, yeah, arguably, like, those other weapons, like, that, those symbols for the other weapons up there that I can't even use right now, really no re need for those to be there. You could, like, you could get rid of those, condense it down to one icon for the weapon I currently have equipped, and then... and then save on a little bit of space, and then I just have, like, a little bit more... And th this is just like a... I'm not saying this is like a terrible thing that they do this or anything. It's just like, you know, kind of a micro example of something. And just another another little niggly interface bit that uh, kind of bothers me in this game. That's like kind of endemic in a... of a... I, I don't even know what it is. It's like... I, I guess just a lack of experience with like just uh Like user-centric design and just like, you know, us usability testing in general, I guess. Which I guess makes sense, actually, now that I think of it. Because, yeah, like, the bi the big, like, big-budget games nowadays from studios with, you know, g games that have, like, a big team of people on working on them, like, one of those people will be the usability expert. Uh, okay, that was... <laughs> that's kind of... I actually kind of... So things, like, really slowed down there while everything was like, exploding, but that's actually kind of cool. Oh, oh, wow, I did not even see what was going on there. I think a monster just suddenly appeared on top of me after I pressed that button, and that was kind of, kind of scary. I bet you I would have like, I I would have like freaked out at that if I were actually paying attention. That would have been like a jump scare for me. I didn't realize. Wow. Well, yeah, we just had our first jump scare in uh, 
yeah, KR7 in a, or I, I should remember, remember the full name and say it as often as possible so you guys can <laughs> actually check this game out. Yeah, our first jump scare of uh, Tarian Saga, KR17. Didn't realize I should have should have brought should have brought on my scare cam for this LP. What the hell was? Okay, I think I hit a projectile there. Okay, there you there you are. It wasn't even the button. Ha! Outsmarted you that time. Okay. But uh, yeah, so so far yeah, the, so far the levels have been small enough. And here I'm getting back to the whole level design keycard centric thing. Uh, so far the levels have been small enough that uh, it hasn't really been a big problem. I haven't gotten super lost at any point. Or at least not to the point where it, like, annoyed me or anything. Might have been a bit boring for you guys. I'm sure a lot of you stopped watching <laughs> while I was... Uh, I say a lot of you as if there's, like, more than two or three people who were ever going to watch this video, but... <laughs> um, yeah, I, I spent, like, probably a bit longer than I should have looking around for that keycard door in the previous level. Oh, my goodness. I don't even know what that was. But anyway, so, so far the levels have been kind of small enough that it hasn't been a huge problem. That was the, that was the problem with a lot of uh, yeah the older PC games that had levels in this style is that they'd like start out pretty good, but then you get to the you'd get to the later levels and you'd have like these big sprawling levels where you'd spend like sp spend like 10, 15 minutes backing through the whole backtracking through the whole thing trying to find the right keycard door, and that that got really annoying. In fact, yeah, if anything, I'm actually curious now. That's actually the one aspect that I think, um, yeah, if, if games would just, like... Because, yeah, to, to a large extent, I think games nowadays have kind of abandoned that approach to level design. You could argue that, like, okay, they know better now because backtracking is, like, kind of an, an, an annoying thing that's to be avoided as much as possible. But, like I said, it has some appeal, to me at least, and I'm sure it does for some other people as well. And that's, that's one way that you could sort of improve on it and make it more appealing, is to just not let the levels get too big and too sprawling. It's like, okay, this this style of level design is suited to a certain size of level. So I think if, yeah, if, design, if developers were just a bit smarter about that, I think, you, you could make, like, a really good game with this style of kind of, you know, big, non-linear, uh, keycard-based, multiple, tar like, checkpoints, or sorry, multiple, like, you know, hit a bunch of triggers to unlock the exit style. That was, a, like, a big, long... Yeah, that, that's the name of this genre. Big, 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 big level keep card gated, uh, ch multi multi buttons to unlock the exit based game design, level design games. That's that's a new genre that I've invented now. Tag 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 this game with that on Steam. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is why I'm yeah bad at. That, I actually actually yeah bad, I don't have the I don't have the wit for like. Coming up with like good snappy names for things in general. Like I've said before, I've uh, or actually I don't know if this will be going up before my Azure Dreams playthrough or not. This is why it, stuff like that is why it takes me like literally like half an hour to think of names for my characters when I'm like playing a new RPG or something. 